In this video, we're going to take a look at the function of Toyota's VVTi and VVTIE variable valve timing system on the 2.5 liter A25A FKS engine. Today's subject vehicle is a 2019 Camry. VVTIE is used on the intake camshaft and controls cam timing using an electric motor and an electric driving unit or EDU in one assembly. The cam timing can be advanced or retarded. The camshaft timing motor assembly rotates near engine speed driving a reduction gear consisting of a sprocket, an eccentric shaft, a planetary gear, and the camshaft gear. When the electric motor rotates faster than the camshaft, the cam timing advances. And when the electric motor rotates slower than the camshaft, cam timing is retarded. When the electric motor rotates the same speed as the camshaft, cam timing is held constant. VVTI is used on the exhaust camshaft and is a conventional electrical hydraulic adjustment system. Cam timing can be advanced or retarded. Oil flow is controlled by the engine control module by activating the cam timing solenoid to move the oil control valve. Advancing or retarding cam timing. Both systems will set fault codes we are accustomed to seeing, like P0016 and P0017. A fault for over-advanced or over-retarded timing will set when the ECM detects a difference between the target and actual cam timing. Most times this will be when a large adjustment is made, but the actual movement is small. A fault for cam crank position correlation can set when the ECM checks the learning value at idle. Learning value is a calibration based on cam and crank position. At idle, intake valve timing is set to the fully retarded position and exhaust camshaft timing is set to the most advanced angle. If the learn value at idle is out of spec, a fault code is set. Specific faults for the VVTIE can be set. For example, actuator circuit faults. The ECM will set a fault code when the target duty cycle does not match the actual duty cycle. The ECM monitors circuit current to determine the actual duty cycle. If using scan data, you want to see nothing more than a four degree difference. The quickest and easiest way to check camshaft timing is using iScan diagnostic software in the engine submenu within the drive menu. Let's look at each camshaft separately. Navigate to and select all intake VVT PIDs. Once selected, we can graph these values at idle or during a test drive. You can also add engine RPM in conjunction with the VVT PIDs to see when the changes happen in relationship to RPM. Viewing intake VVT target angle bank 1, compare it to intake change angle bank 1. At idle, expect to see about 25 degrees. These values should be within four degrees of each other. Viewing exhaust VVT, expect to see the hold learn value at about 45 degrees. Then compare exhaust VVT target angle bank one to exhaust change angle bank one. These values should be within four tenths of a degree of each other. If one of the camshaft angles are out of spec, you can manually activate the actuators on each camshaft to test mechanical function. Using our iScan device as a J2534 pass-through device, we can access the test via GTS, also known as TechStream Lite. Let's look at the intake camshaft function test first. This active test changes VVT, i.e. the intake, between zero and 65 degrees. This test causes a rough idle or the engine to stall. Using the slider, adjust intake camshaft timing. The target value should match the current value. The higher the value, engine idle will become rough and eventually stall. Now on to the exhaust camshaft. This active test changes the VVT on the exhaust incrementally between minus 100% to 100%. This test causes 
a rough idle, or the engine to stall. Using the slider, adjust the exhaust camshaft timing. The target value should match the current value. Expect the engine to stall. Now that we've viewed data stream and tested output function using a scan tool, there are a few mechanical inspections and measurements we can perform. Let's begin with the VVTIE EDU or actuator. Remove the actuator from the engine. Consult service information for the details of that procedure. Once removed, we are going to take a few measurements to determine mechanical clearance between the VVTIE EDU assembly and the timing gear. Using a dial caliper, measure the outside of the VVTIE EDU joint width. Then measure the inside of the timing gear cutout. With both measurements, calculate the clearance. The maximum clearance is 0.7 millimeters. If the clearance is over the maximum value, Replace the VVT-IE EDU assembly or camshaft gear, depending on which measures out of spec. Next, remove the VVT-I solenoid. The mechanical inspection of the solenoid can be done by checking the movement of the plunger. The difference between the retracted position and the extended should be 4.3 millimeters or more. Engine oil debris buildup in the control valve can cause timing fault codes. You can remove the control valve and inspect it for debris. If you find debris or still suspect debris, check the oil control valve filters as well. Some models have a filter in the camshaft bearing caps and others in the oil lines and fittings. Check repair info to locate the OCV filter on the engine you are working on. We could take it a step further and test the electrical signals as well, in the case that you need to diagnose a circuit fault code. The VVT-IE EDU assembly has a six wire connector. Terminal one is VTP motor operation request. That's channel one on our scope. Terminal 2 is VB1, or battery positive supply, from the VVT relay. That's channel 2 on our scope, measuring current. Terminal 3 is chassis ground, not monitored on our scope. We tested this independently with a voltage drop test. Terminal 4 is VTM diagnostic signal output, and that's channel 3 on our scope. Terminal 5 is VTD motor rotation signal output being channel 4 on our scope. Terminal 6 is VTS motor rotation signal output, and that's channel 5 on our scope. We have channels 6 through 8 on our scope monitoring camshaft and crankshaft position. Our capture was taken at idle. Channel 1 motor operation request, which is the duty cycle. As this increases, Depending on the speed of the camshaft and the speed of the motor, camshaft timing is adjusted. When adjusted, you should see a change in the current reading on channel two. In this example, we witness current at about half an amp rising to about five amps during major movements. Channel three is a digital diagnostic signal. When tested, we witnessed the pulse to ground occurred at a frequency of about five hertz. Channels 4 and 5 are monitoring VTD and VTS. They should look similar to each other, but will vary depending on camshaft movement. The VVTI system is much simpler electronically because it works in conjunction with oil pressure. The solenoid has a two-wire connector. Terminal 1 is the duty cycle control from the ECM. Terminal 2 is the positive feed from the ECM. Channel 1 of our scope is connected to the positive feed from the ECM. Channel 2 is a current measurement of the positive feed from the ECM. Channel 3 is the duty cycle control from the ECM. At idle, the solenoid is drawing less than a quarter amp. 
This is because it is resting in the fully advanced position. While we activate the solenoid using our scan tool, duty cycle increases and current draw reaches about one amp. The engine also stalls. I hope this information gives you the confidence to tackle a fault in Toyota's VVTi and VVTIE systems. Now remember, oil condition, oil pressure have to be good for these systems to work, so always start with the basics. Thanks for watching. Check out our other videos for more Toyota diagnostic tests and procedures.